Well, welcome back. Oil prices continue to surge. Gasoline right now at $4.33 a gallon. The Biden administration is asking U.S. adversaries such as Venezuela, Saudi Arabia and Iran to pump more oil rather than drilling here at home. In a recent op-ed in The Wall Street Journal, Let Alaska Sell American Energy to the World, the Alaskan authors write, the U.S. can responsibly produce enough energy to meet its own needs and those of the world while weakening Russia, but only if Washington allows How's it to happen? Joining me right now is Alaska Senator and Senate Armed Services Committee member Dan Sullivan. Senator, it's great to have you today. Thanks very much for being here. I guess morning, one question Ryan. is, why is it that the White House comes out in the middle of this and says, well, they could be drilling. There are 9,000 licenses out there. Let them drill. Meanwhile, we've had two years plus of the Democrats saying that they want to kill the fossil fuel industry. Yeah, look, it's, it's national security suicide is what it is. And number one, the Biden administration needs to stop begging brutal dictators from uh, producing more oil for America and focus on America. That op-ed you mentioned that was written by the mayor of the North Slope Borough and one of our great state representatives, the Biden administration, as you know, is not leveling with the American people. You are exactly right. From day one, they've been trying to shut down the production of American energy, which is not only hurting, hurting working families and providing pink slips to great workers like in my state, but as you know, Maria, it empowers dictators like Putin who use energy as a weapon. They need a really big course correction here. I sent a letter to the president with 22 other Republican senators right before the State of the Union say, Mr. President, announce these 12 actions you can take to produce more American energy, and then people maybe will start believing you. But right now, we know that you've been trying to kill American energy, and it's a horrible policy for our country, but also for our national security. Yeah, I mean, we have all of the uh, sound bites and, and all of the history of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and the Democrats saying that they don't want fossil fuel companies to grow in the future and they want to kill the industry. But why? Is it because they're just so married to this climate change agenda that they're, they don't want to look like they were wrong from day one? I, why, why not? We're in a crisis. Isn't it time to pivot? It's absolutely time to pivot. That was the point of my letter to the president. You know, we're in this new era of authoritarian aggression led by dictators in Russia, Putin, and of course, China, Xi Jinping. But one of our greatest strategic assets that we have, one of our greatest advantages that we have over these dictators is our natural resources, is our energy, not just for Americans, but for our allies as well. So this is a huge strength and they're trying to undermine it. And now, as you mentioned, Maria, they're coming up with these excuses saying that, oh no, they've been fine with American energy. It's just not true. The president's not leveling with the American people and he needs to do that and course correct immediately or he's gonna be continuing to undermine a huge strength of American foreign policy and national security, not let alone driving up inflation, which is exactly what's been happening because of their energy policies. And, and will we be caught flat-footed should China decide to ramp up its aggression? Senator, you recently introduced the Stand with Taiwan Act, which yeah. would impose crippling sanctions on China if it were to invade Taiwan. This morning, Chinese stocks in the United States are plunging after the Securities and Exchange Commission raised concerns about Chinese companies in America failing to adhere to U.S. accounting rules. They don't even follow our accounting rules. No. Now investors are worried that they're going to get delisted, so they're selling these stocks. Senator Tom Cotton, your colleague, was on Fox last night stressing the need to, the, to break away from the Chinese economy, decouple. Here's what he said. I got to get your reaction. Watch. It is vital that we decouple strategically from the Chinese economy. Everything we're doing to break away from the Russian economy, to put a distance between our economy and theirs, to get our companies out of Russia, we should be doing in China again right now. We should be doing these in a careful and deliberate fashion. So we are never in the position with China and Taiwan that some countries in Europe found themselves with Russia and Ukraine, and that we don't empower and embolden the Chinese communists to go for the jugular in Taiwan because they think they have America over the economic barrel.
Y yeah, but Senator, instead, the Biden administration canceled the China uh, investigation, right? I mean, they, they, we were investigating the intellectual property theft, and they, they, they canceled the so-called China initiative. Uh, and, and you've got plenty of Chinese companies trading in the U.S. that are in investor portfolios, meaning unwitting investors are funding the CCP's expansion as it tries to overtake the U.S. as the number one superpower. So explain that. Well, look, I agree with Senator Cotton, and I've been pressing the SEC directly. I led a letter, again, with a number of senators saying that you have to delist these companies if they're not abiding by the accounting rules and other standards that we require of American companies. But look, Maria, there's a broader issue here. It's the same issue. Putin and Xi Jinping are working together. There is no doubt about that. But China also fears America's natural resource and energy strength. Again, it's a huge advantage we have over them that they don't have. And finally, you mentioned my bill. I think we need to come together and learn already one lesson from the Ukraine crisis is that sanctions, comprehensive sanctions, work best if they're ready to go before the conflict, not after it. Let Xi Jinping know that if you militarily invade Taiwan, here's what you're going to get. That's what my bill does. It says you will trigger massive sanctions against your country if you militarily invade Taiwan. That's the best way yeah. to provide deterrence. And that's why I'm trying to encourage all of my colleagues to uh, support my legislation. Stand with Taiwan Act. Uh all right, we'll be watching that, Senator. Thanks very much for being here this morning, Senator Dan Thank Sullivan you, from Alaska in D.C.